history welcome back to my channel today I will be doing part four of our learn our 1055 X and 1050 brother 10 needle machine today will be the last of the four part series I know I said five but the more I looked at it I realized I could get this last section in in one video so hopefully it won't be as long as the other one but I think I can get it all in today and uh, so that's what I'm going to do I will be talking about the design uh, overview of setting up the designs and all of the icons that has to do with that particular um, section of our machine so that's what we're going to do today but before I get started of course as usual please remember to subscribe hit the like button share and be sure to ring that notification bell so you will be made aware and notified when I put up another uh, video um, going forward I will be doing more demos and tutorials of various things that I've been working on so that is what we're going to do going forward in the future there is a section that um, is part of the overview on the design screen called my design center that is very um, interesting it's a lot of information that can be gathered on that particular doing those particular uh, the projects in the design center you can definitely make sure that you can do your own individualized personalized designs and everything and it is really fascinating it's a lot a lot a lot that can be learned and I'm in the process of learning it so as soon as I become a little bit more comfortable with it and more proficient then I will be bringing forward some of the information about my design center I've been playing with it but I'm not there yet where I actually want to put up a video so look forward to that and um, I have several other things that I have in mind that I'm going to put out here so continue to follow me on my channel I also want to thank everybody that has already subscribed and thank you for subscribing sharing and letting some of your friends and colleagues know about my channel all of you that have commented on my channel I do appreciate every comment that you have put on here I've gotten advice I've gotten some uh, information correction all of those things are very helpful to me and my channel and I'm very grateful for that so continue to do that and I do appreciate all of that as you can see I have on my Queens are born in July shirt this is my birthday month so I'm celebrating the whole entire month of July uh, for my birthday so stay tuned for the next video that's coming up I have a little surprise but anyway um, again don't forget to hit the subscribe button the like share and notification and now we will get started with the lesson for today okay I have my camera zoomed in onto my LCD panel and as I go through different icons I will probably try to zoom in a little bit so you may not see the entire screen at the whole uh, all the time so please keep in mind that I will concentrate on exactly what I'm I'm speaking on and when it is necessary I will zoom in and out to show hopefully uh, details a little better um, I know I, that I got a comment about showing my entire screen on one of my videos which I was aware that the entire screen wasn't being shown and I am trying to, to uh, make sure I do a better video on that but my emphasis right now will be on certain parts and that's what I'm going to concentrate on because I want to make sure that everyone can see it and if I have the camera um, too far away or not zoomed in close enough you may not be able to see it so right now what I'm discussing discuss, <clears throat> discussing right now is selecting a pattern 
as you know we have all of these different patterns that are accessible to us uh, on our machine which as I mentioned before in a previous video is that we have a total of 699 designs total that are on our machine which includes 140 frame patterns, 37 lettering fonts, 11 monogram um, monogram right here fonts and um, then we have um, the quilting stippling uh, designs here so we have all of this that we have access to without even having to load a design onto our computer our computer our embroidery machine I always seem to call it a computer because it is and I keep computer on my mind but first thing is that you will select a pattern category which each one of these are individual categories and inside the category are subcategories. So as I selected this design here, this icon or design here, as you see we got to a different spot here with various categories and in each category there are numerous designs as you know and so we can just scroll through all of these and select them and of course as you select it it goes up here to our regional field uh, where you can make a decision whether or not you want to uh, stitch out that design or select another design and as you can see they come with various sizes some are really big some are not as big and then some are very tiny so we have a whole variety and they even have some of the cute little ones that you have in here for children. So just wanted to point that out. So we'll return. And here we have our steampunk designs, which I did stitch out, I believe this butterfly on the back of my jacket and I really like it. So these are some of the designs that are available in steampunk. And go back then we have our decorative stitches that you can use on uh, if you're quilting or if you are making a pillow or a blanket or even um, a pillowcase anything that these can be done borders onto uh, napkins or tablecloths or runners or things like that so and then you can um, change to make the icons bigger so you can see them better and again even larger so you can see them better so each one of these as you select is going to vary the size of the design so you can make a decision as to which one you want which design you're interested in so that keep that in mind that's what these icons over here are for so we'll go back and return on that once you have selected the category and then the individual design then you can go ahead and select set now this is a very large design and it's going to have to um, you're going to have to have the right arm hoop rather attached to your arm and everything in order to stitch that so before we get to this page let me go back to the to the other page um, the very beginning back here again so just wanted to let you know that there are several ways to get your designs you can get it from uh, the, the machine's memory a USB device your computer or you can do it wirelessly now these are the icons down here that you can use to select that this is the machine's memory and I have a few designs that I have saved in the memory this one with my name on it are things that I've been playing around with in my design center and uh, believe it or not I'm not going to really get into it but I just want to let you know that you can actually write on the screen in my design center which this is my handwriting and it will stitch it out well you scan you can write on the screen or you can write on a sheet of paper and scan it in and the machine will stitch it out 
Uh, but I'm not going to go through that. I just want to give you a heads up and let you know. And the rest of these are some of the designs that I've actually stitched out that I just uh, saved to, to the machine. Then you can also, of course, as we know, use the USB, which I have my USB in here. And these are some of the designs that I have already loaded on my USB. Now, as I mentioned before, you can use either the PES, P as in Paul, E as in Edward, S as in Shirley, PES format, or you can use the DST, D as in dog, S as in Sam, and T as in Tom, DST, on your multi-needle or your 10-needle machine. Those are the two um, embroidery formats that you can use. So here I think I have most of these are PES but as you can see here I have some DST so I have PES, I have DST, I have the software that convert it back and forth so it's never an issue for me as long as I'm utilizing one of the two formats. So just keep that in mind that that is something that you can do. This is when you're getting your design from your computer um, and you have the Ethernet connected or Ethernet connected and which we have which a uh, cable came with the machine so hopefully if that's something that you want to do it's um, you ha it came with the machine so you can plug in the uh, um, Ethernet cable and you can get the design directly from your computer or you can also do wireless. Now wireless according to the <coughs> manual, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, you can retrieve the pattern via the wireless network connection if you are using the PE Design 11. Now I'm not sure if you can do it with other softwares like Wilcom Hatch or Embrillance. I'm not sure. I've not tried to use my wireless um, capability as of yet. I just use the USB. I'm comfortable with that. That's how I first start learning and I, I've not switched off from that. I do have PE Design 11 software and so at some point I probably will try to, to see if I can do it that way but as of yet I have not done it that way and this would be um, from there this icon here will get you to use it uh, wirelessly and I, uh, hit, hit the icon as you can see nothing happened because it's down here but I don't have it connected wirelessly so nothing's going to come through. So just wanted to go through those. So now um, these are the frames, multiple frames and each one of these frames up here has another set of frames with different designs. Every one of these um, regardless of what the shape is will have a selection of the designs and all of these designs for each one of these frames are the same. I noticed that every one of them are the same regardless to what frame you choose but it is something that you can use to create your own monogram or your own design. You can put a frame around a, a, um, a flower or your initials or some other cute little design and just create your own um, individual design. Also you have uh, border designs and you have buttonhole designs. If you have a, a design or pattern that you have loaded onto your machine that whereas you can stitch out a buttonhole for that particular garment or whatever it is, the pillow, or whatever it is you're making, you have uh, you can select buttonholes and they have several different uh, styles and what have you that you can select. Uh, and as far as your your uh, decorative stitches, I said border, but decorative stitches basically is what these are. You can select these, so that makes uh, gives you even more capabilities of personalizing your your um, embroidery. You do not have to necessarily download a design from somebody that digitized it for you. You can actually get in here and be very creative and create your own by um, selecting it and if you want to add to it you can do that so forth and so on. So let's move on to to the next page. Um, so where am I? 
Number five, I told you about retrieving the, um, I did one, two, three, four. Number five, this is retrieving it from the m machine memory. And then of course I went through all of these as well. So now we're going to go into the subcategories and talk a little bit about, well, I did that too as well, selecting the pattern. And once you have a pattern that you like and you select it, then you hit set and then you go from there. And then we're going to start talking about everything that's on this particular page. So on this page, when you get to this page, you uh, this is your regional field here that shows you the pattern that you have selected and up here and let me adjust the camera so you can see where I'm talking I'm up, I'm going up a little bit now so I will adjust the camera so we can see at the very top where I'm talking about hopefully you can move it a little closer hopefully you can see here you have these numbers here you have the size the top number is your vertical the bottom number is your width so this gives you the size 7.71 by 7.67 which means you have to have at least an 8 by 8 or larger frame your uh i use mighty hoop so i can use my 8 by 9 mighty hoop for this particular design and um here you get a view of what it's going to look like in your hoop and this icon here tells you the hoops that you can use the sizes that you can use so you can't use your four by four um uh, five by seven four by four or the two by one or whatever you have to use those that are bigger uh, frames in order for this to fit so you have to make sure that you're getting it in the right um, the right size hoop and so again down here does the exact same thing and it's an arrow that shows you what the measurements are vertical and horizontal so you'll know exactly what that is also it will tell you the distance from the center of the selected design within the combination here is what it's supposed to be for that particular design and on this particular um, icon right here it is the degree of rotation on the selected design so if I hit rotate and I decide to rotate it 90 uh, at a 90% angle you see right here it says 90% so I've rotated it that way and another uh, rotation and on and on and on so that tells you exactly how and you can rotate I don't know if you've noticed, hopefully you have, but if you put on put a design on, say this is vertical, and you get the message saying design is too large for your hoop, um, do you want to rotate? That means that if you rotate it 90 degrees, and that's what it'll say, then it will fit on your hoop. Now keep in mind, you want to orientate your design once you have it on there, to go in the direction if you need this to be at the head or the top of a, a <clears throat> pillow a uh, top of a shirt or, or whatever a dress or, or whatever it is that you're making remember that you had to rotate it so this would be your head this would be your foot so you have to make sure that you keep that in mind if and whenever you do rotate a um, a design on here so you, you don't have the wrong orientation on here now this icon here for me is extremely important because what it does I use my camera always every time I hoop a design now this is what I do it's not saying you have to 
I always do my camera. Every now and then I'll do the snowman, but I always do the camera because I want to see exactly how this design is sitting in my hoop on my um, pantogram, how it's going to stitch. Do I have the center? And the center is where your X is. Now this is a very ornate design, so you may not be able to see the center X, but the center X is always in the center and you want to see where that is. Now these, as you know, are your um, guys where you can move it up, down, side to side, what have you. And then you also can make this look bigger if you want to see something specific in here. Very fine, intricate, you can make this bigger or you can go all the way down and make it uh, back down to 100%. You can't go any, any smaller than that on here. But on that particular, on this particular page, I just wanted to point out that that's exactly what you can do. Now, let me get back to the other page. Here, very important is size. Now, what I do when I hit my size, like if I feel uncomfortable with the size of my design and how it's fitting into my um hoop because I use aftermarket hoops mostly my mighty hoops are considered aftermarket they're not the hoops that actually came with the machine so my machine our machine will not recognize the mighty hoops I know I've had seen a lot of questions about how do I get my machine to recognize my mighty hoop and so forth and so on your machine is not set up to recognize aftermarket hoops However, that doesn't mean you can't use them. If you have an embroidery uh, editing software, you can add the size of hoops that you purchase into your embroidery editing software. And when you're uh, setting up your software to on your USB to be loaded into the machine, you can make sure that you have it loaded uh, at the particular size that you want that's going to be comfortable with. If you don't do that, or, or if you're using a design directly from the uh, memory of, of the um, machine, then you have the option of making it smaller. Now, it will go, this is going to make it smaller, as you can see. If I hit it, it goes down. And it will stop, and you'll hear that little click, click, click. It won't go any smaller than that. You can make it larger. And as you hear the little click, 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 it won't go any larger. However, there is. Let me see if you can. Uh, each one of these will allow you to manipulate it in some form or fashion, but it's only going to do it to a certain degree. After that, it's not going to do anything else unless you hit this little stitch icon here. This one that looks like let me see if I can zoom in on it. This icon here that looks like stitches with the horizontal and the vertical, if you hit this, then it's going to say OK to reset the pattern to its original size, angle, and position. And, what, and that's what this did. Now what this is going to allow me to do is back to its original size. However, since it is highlighted, I am able to make this design much smaller than what it originally was going to let me make it. So basically what I'm saying is this is an override and the machine is recalibrating all the stitches so the, the correct density will be applied because you're doing it with this being uh, chosen. So I can go much smaller. This is down to a 5.24 by 5.21 when originally it was 7.71 7 by 7 point something else. So it's really little. And it will also allow me to go much bigger. So
it has allowed me to go back to the seven point it's not going to let me on here it doesn't appear to let me go any bigger than the 7.71 by 7.67 but I can go smaller and that's probably because um, limitation of the hoop that this machine is recognizing based upon the arm that's in here now because I've been able to make them larger than the original right now I can only make it smaller but just keep in mind if you're interested in going past the uh, the set parameters as far as usually it's only 10% bigger or 10% smaller you can actually override that by using this particular icon here so keep that in mind and I uh, I'm not sure if they tell you what that particular icon is called but you can definitely override it and um, so I'm going to go back to the original that took me yeah, back to the original so okay on that so now we got size we got rotation this will let me um, maybe let me get a different design that's a little smaller and um, where I could probably manipulate it a little bit more. I'm going to get a smaller design, something like this, maybe even smaller. Yes, okay. So, this is a mirror design. And what that does you got a horizontal mirror design so it flips it this is not a good depiction of it flipping I don't know if you can tell that it flipped on this particular design but this is your mirror this is your density which is grayed out because I can't do anything on this particular design with density this is your color selection here and it depends upon whether or not you're using manual or if you've already set it up but that is your color selection and um, here you will have your border function so if you want this to be on the border of something then you select how you want the border horizontal vertical horizontal uh, in the corner so forth and so on so this is your border uh, icon here this is your duplication as you can see now I have two that's duplication and then this one which is grayed out would be um, actually they're not telling me what that one is so it is not something that I can actually address because the, the manual is not telling me exactly what that is I'll have to look that up and find out what it is okay this particular is your applique that I just touched this design this icon here is your applique and the applique distance and so forth and so on if you're going to do an applique and you can do uh, how you're going to um, scale it in for it to be your applique this one is your border outline it is the pattern outline here this design here would be your pattern outline so you can manipulate this and change the size and what have you put it in your memory this is the distance plus or minus however you want the outline how close or how far apart that you want the outline to be see how I'm making it a little larger you can see how the outline is spreading out because I made the outline larger see that pretty cool or you can put it back to where it was so that's your outline and as you're doing this you can go all the way down to zero should be able to but anyway you can put it in the memory so you always remember that that is your outline and this particular one is stippling 
you can check the stippling. Now that is oftentimes used when you're doing in, uh, quilting, but stippling is a very pretty pattern that can be done with any kind of, uh, put it on a blanket, put it on a pillow, put it on um, baby bed, burping cloth, those kinds of things would be really cute with the stippling and then you can uh, put the distance in here whether you want the spacing to be bigger so as you can see I'm making the spacing between the stippling itself larger or you can make it smaller or you can make the stippling further away from the original design if you can see it has left a bigger space here so it's not hugging the design completely. So that's what that's what this is for. So this is your border. This is your um, applique, your outline, and your stippling. And then of course these that are grayed out, we all know what what they what they are. Text, multicolor, your ABCs, and uh, cutting in between there. So, down here is also important. Add. What does that do for you? Say, for instance, you want to add a text. You want to write um, whatever. I'm going to do a number just for the heck of it. One, two, three. So, it is... Um, Should be one, two, three added to my design. So when I get ready to to stitch it, it's going to do one, two, three. If you didn't like that, then um, you can delete it. Take that out. So basically, I hit delete. It took the one, two, three out, even though we didn't see it. And I'm trying. There it is, right there. It was under there. Okay, so that, that's the one, two, three. Now, if I decide I don't want the one, two, three, then it's going to take it away. If I decide I don't want the duplication, it's going to take that away. And also, if you notice, you can manipulate this and move it around yourself. And you can be able to. But anyway, you can put it in the memory so you always remember that. That is your outline. And this particular one, is stippling. You can ch check the stippling. Now that is oftentimes used when you're doing in, uh, quilting, but stippling is a very pretty pattern that can be done with any kind of, uh, put it on a blanket, put it on a pillow, put it on um, baby bed, burping cloth, those kinds of things would be really cute with the stippling and then you can uh, put the distance in here whether you want the spacing to be bigger so as you can see I'm making the spacing between the stippling itself larger or you can make it smaller or you can make the stippling further away from the original design if you can see it has left a bigger space here so it's not hugging the design completely. So that's what that's what this is for. So this is your border. This is your um, applique, your outline, and your stippling. And then of course these that are grayed out, we all know what what they what they are. Text, multicolor, your ABCs, and uh, cutting in between there. So, down here is also important. Add. What does that do for you? Say, for instance, you want to add a text. You want to write um, whatever. I'm going to do a number just for the heck of it. One, two, three. So, it is... Um,
should be one, two, three added to my design. So when I get ready to to stitch it, it's going to do one, two, three. If you didn't like that, then um, you can delete it. Take that out. So basically, I hit delete. It took the one, two, three out, even though we didn't see it. And I'm trying. There it is, right there. It was under there. Okay, so that that's the one, two, three. Now, if I decide I don't want the one, two, three, then it's going to take it away. If I decide I don't want the duplication, it's going to take that away. And also, if you notice, you can manipulate this and move it around yourself. And you can, um, if you have the handles on there, you can actually size it. So that is, and then once you get all of this the way you want it, then you hit the in edit, and then you're going to move into the next uh, page for the different things that you can do on, on your next page. So now we're at the page, uh, the embroidery stitch out overview. And I'm going to come out of this and then I'm going to get another, choose another pattern. I'm going to choose the uh, pattern that they use as an example. If I can find it, here it is. This is the one they like to use as an example. So edit has end. So now I am on the embroidery stitch out overview page. Again, rotate. You can rotate it 90 degrees if you want to. 90 degrees, 90 degrees the other way, 90 degrees upside down. Keep going until you get it back where you want it to be. And on, um, so that is that. And then this one is your basting stitches around your design. So I think I had mentioned on another um, video, and I'm going to, back this up a little bit to make sure we can see everything okay so if you're um, sometimes you want to just base your your um, fabric onto your stabilizer or if you're doing an applique you want to base that fabric on your on two your other fabric so you can go ahead and, and manipulate it well this is the basting um, icon to be able to do that and you can manipulate how long the stitches and everything are like I had mentioned on the other one and it's on another page down here where you can uh, adjust the size this which is grayed out here is your pattern connection for your by your camera now that is what you use when you're doing borders and uh, you have to be in the bordering uh, mode for your camera to to recognize that I, I learned that by mistake when I was trying to do my sash um, bordering with the sash um, magnetic sash hoop uh, when I did that demo, I realized after the fact the reason why it didn't work correctly because I didn't have enough background information and that I wasn't doing it correctly. So I will be doing another video to do it correctly. But you do have to use your connecting um, icon to connect the next move in your border. So that's what this particular icon is for. And then this one, the fourth icon is your individual thread selection options so if you want to select different threads or what have you it takes you to this page and you can select your threads and this comes in really handy especially if you're doing an applique what I have learned is and I always wondered how that worked um, if you have a design say you have a design that has 15 different colors or 20 or even 12 different colors as you know our machine only does 10 because we only have room for 10 spools so you can only do 10 different colors but you have this design that is more than 10 
So you can set all 10 of your needles for the proper design that you want. You have 10, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, when you get to number 10, well, before you, when you get to number 10, then you need to hit this button here, and it's going to cause the machine to stop stitching when it finishes with number 10 thread and it's going to automatically stop which is going to allow you to switch out threads so you can do the next two or five or ten more or however many more different colors that you need so that is how you are able to stitch a design that has more than ten different colors now I um, have not used this before because frankly not reading the manual before now I didn't know how to do it I knew it was a way I just didn't know what the way was so now I know so that's what I'm going to be using going forward what I've done in the past which you may have as well if you um, wasn't aware of this was just watch your machine and you knew when it got to that tenth color then you went in there and stopped it manually yourself because you're going to put all your colors in however many colors it is and then the other thing that you have to keep in mind is when you say for instance it looks like this design has um one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and when it gets to ten okay i'm trying to count it it should be one through 10 because I put the hand up there so let me take that off take that off when it gets one gets all the way one two three four five six seven eight uh, looks like it only has t eight colors well if I had a different design that had more than eight say it had 12 I'm going to go ahead and put all 12 of my select the colors for all 12 colors that I need but I'm going to use this behind number 10 so it'll stop then I'm going to put the last two colors on there and then it's going to go ahead I'll hit the unlock and hit the uh, green button and then it'll go back to stitching so just want to hopefully that's clear just remember that if you go to this particular page that um, you can select and I want to go back to the page right here this page this icon right here will take you to this page and then you can select all the colors that you need hit the stop button once you get to your 10 and then go ahead and stitch the other colors that you would like to stitch so just keep that in mind okay as we know these are our movement uh, alignment buttons I think is what they call it alignment um, buttons so you can move it back and forth up and down so it is moving the pantogram and you can adjust that on your machine to get it aligned the way you want it or position on the cloth that you're embroidering it on however you want it so it's going to stitch exactly where you want it and not necessarily in the center so and then this of course puts it back into the center the center button puts it back into the center this I believe just makes it move quicker or slower see that makes it move real slow this a little bit more and then this real fast so that's all that does it just um, allows you to adjust the, the speed of you moving that particular guide around and then <coughs> excuse me we all know what this is this is your snowman so if you hit this it will um, it says okay to revert to the original position and angle it, okay so you're gonna put your snowman right there and that just helps you to align everything up to make sure everything is centered it's gonna the machine is going to do its camera thing and recognize the snowman and wherever you have set that at 
it is going to make sure that it's where it is. My machine is not recognizing a snowman because I don't have anything in there. It's moving around looking for one, then it's going to come back probably and tell me they can't find it or whatever. It's trying to recognize it. It's no snowman there, so I don't have a hoop in there. I'm assuming it's going to come back and say there's nothing there. Cannot recognize the embroidered positioning mark because, of course, I have nothing in there. But that's what it does. That's your snowman. This particular icon here is your color sort and it allows you to sort your thread based upon how you uh, the sequence in what in which you wanted to stitch out this one is uninter uninterrupted stitching say for instance like I did a project yesterday that had six different potentially six different colors that could be used but it didn't need six different colors because some of those uh, stops were dye line and dye line is when you're doing like an embroidery uh, a applique type project and they have the dye line and then you stitch the you put the fabric down on top of that and the needle stitches around it in the right place then you can take the hoop off cut it out and so forth and so on so a lot of those stops were dye lines so you don't need to change your color every time you do a dye line with I just had the one color so everything was one color so what this does this tells the machine that everything that I stitch on this particular design is going to be one color you don't have to worry about looking for another color these two are the tight tight um, the tie off and at the beginning of the stitch and the tie off at the end of the stitch. I don't bother it. I don't know enough about the digitizing aspect of it. I just know that every stitch has to have a beginning and an end tie off so it doesn't unravel. And this allows you to adjust it some kind of way. But again, I don't bother it because um, the design has been set up to do it the way it's supposed to do. Um, this, as we know, is editing if you need to edit. This is your memory again if you want to save all of this information to the machine, everything that you have manipulated and changed and you want to save it to the memory of the machine, you can do so. And then this one is your starting and ending position setting again you can set it where you want it to start like if I moved it over this way uh, let me see put it on fast if I move it over that way and I wanted it to start there the next time I'm going to set this as my start and so the next time I do it it's going to do what it's supposed to do this as we know is the trace and let me uh, I didn't mean to hit it but I did but it will trace now, I told you earlier that I always use my camera. The other thing that I always do, I use my tracer. I always look at the camera positioning of the design and then I trace it. I don't care if I have a regular hoop in there or if I have my mighty hoop in there or if I have a fast frame in there. I don't care what type of hoop that I'm using, even my uh, um, hoop tip clamp that I have. I always trace. I want to know where my needle is going to fall. I want to know where my needle is going to fall. I do not want my needle to hit the side of my frame. So I trace. There are people that are not of that persuasion. They don't think that they have to do it. But everything that I have read that has anything to do with embroidery does say you should definitely definitely trace your pattern so that's what I do so now I'm I'm going to get out of this and move to the next page which is a very familiar page this is your color sort page uh, this is your regional field where your design is and you can look at this and see the little cross mark it's going to tell you where the the uh, stitching is at any given time and this is your progress board here 
and each one of these different colors represent the different colors of the thread so you'll know exactly how far is the black, the white, the yellow, the green, the blue, the red, whatever it is. It tells you all of that. So that is the um, progress chart. This is um, tells you how long it's going to take you to stitch. This says 20 minutes. So this design itself takes 20 minutes. This tells you how many colors. The bottom tells you how many colors. Nine. The top is going to tell you exactly where you are with that nine uh, colors that you have to have. This particular one, the bottom number, is going to tell you how many stitches is in that particular design. Right here it says 9,450, 9,450. The top number is going to tell you how many stitches you have already stitched out of that 9,450. So you can look at that and, tell, and gauge how much more time you have to do it. However, you don't have to because here tells you uh, the time and where you are. 21 minutes and you've only stitched in 3 minutes of the 21. So that is the information that you get here. This particular uh, icon or whatever you want to call it here is one of my favorite because since I manually select my colors. I don't do it, uh, I don't set up a sequence, I do a manual sequence. I, every time I hit a different, um, the one through, the one through nine, I'm going to know what it's going to stitch when it gets there. I'm going to know what it's going to stitch. Therefore, I know what I want that particular part of the design, the color. And it says it is the regional di display showing the part of the design that will be stitched for the current color. The regional display here shows the part of the design that will be stitched for the current color. So you know exactly what color the handle is, the, the frame around the heart and all of that as you go down. You know exactly where you are. I love that, I love that, I love that. It is absolutely wonderful. This is your thread sequence. If I had selected colors and everything, it would be here with the various different colors that I selected. And um, over here are the colors that are available. It says the thread color setup display is this. And this one over here is a thread color sequence display. Sequence display, color display. This should match if you're doing the automatic sequence where you have your thread set up where the machine knows what color is on what needle. If you're doing the manual like I do, this over here thread colors display is not going to match my sequence because this is going to be individualized this is going to be whatever probably the design itself is supposed to be called for based upon what thread you have selected if it's Floriani or Sulky or what have you so these should match if you have it automatic if you have it manually sequenced they will not match this again is your stop so if you need to stop for applique or you need to trim it or if you need to stop it because you need to add thread colors because you've gone past the 10 that's what this little hand is for it is your stop hand this is my friend that little one there that's what I use all the time because I go through here and I select my colors based upon what color I have on these threads 1 through 10. If I have white, black, green, purple, yellow, red, turquoise, pink, gold, green, teal, whatever, then I'm going to know by looking at my thread that I have up here what I'm going to put in here and then once I'm done with that I hit OK I'm good to go that's how I do my thread um, setup. 
So that and this icon here is another lifesaver. If you don't remember anything else, remember this can save your life. What does that do? That is your, um, let me see what the official name is, your forward backward stitch adjustment. Goes in increment of one millimeter through a thousand, one millimeter back all the way up to 1,000 millimeters forward and everything in between. You got the one, one minus one plus, 10 minus 10 plus, 100 minus 100 plus, 1,000 minus 1,000 plus. What does that mean? Your thread broke and it stitched four, five, six, 10, 20 movements before it, the machine recognized that it broke. And now you switch, you, you, you re-thread it and everything. You can hit your 10 minus and it's going to move it back 10, hit 10 again, it's going to move it back 10. So it's going to put you at the exact spot or as close back as possible to where it broke. So you're not going to have a skip stitch uh, uh, space. You're not going to have that space in there where you would have uh, normally a space in there and you don't want that space. You want it to be right there. So you use this to make sure that that doesn't uh, happen. You can, what I've done several times, I have, and I'm going to get out of here and go to this thing right here where it says return, and then this thing here, let me adjust it down. Okay, here is return. Here is the little red lock. And then below that, as you know, is the green button. How many times have I been distracted, not paying attention, and hit my return instead of my unlock to get started? Guess what happens? You hit return. You took that puppy all the way back to the beginning. How many times have I done that? more times than I want to remember or admit. Not like 10 times, but I know I have done it at least four with various different um, projects. And it gets on my last nerve because I made a mistake. I really don't think that this return button should be here because it's too easy to hit. You want to start it because that's what you do when you hit this button, but instead you accidentally hit this button and you just think you screwed everything up. Well, you didn't. If you know to go in here and put it back where it belongs. And what I do, I just guesstimate how many stitches back I am based upon where we are here. And especially the top number because if I have nine different thread stops and I would say was on number six and now I'm all the way back at number one then I know that I'm going to have to hit plus 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 until at least I get to number six. I'll hit the thousand if that if it's a lot of stitches or a hundred or whichever it is until I get to like number five then I'll get go to a lower number to go forward. Um, if you have the handles on there, you can actually size it. So that is, and then once you get all of this the way you want it, then you hit the in edit, and then you're going to move into the next uh, page for the different things that you can do on, on your next page. So now we're at the page, uh, the embroidery stitch out overview. And I'm going to come out of this and then I'm going to get another, choose another pattern. I'm going to choose the uh, pattern that they use as an example. If I can find it, here it is. This is the one they like to use as an example. So edit has end. So now I am on the embroidery stitch out overview page 
again rotate you can rotate it 90 degrees if you want to 90 degrees 90 degrees the other way 90 degrees upside down keep going until you get it back where you want it to be and on um, so that is that and then this one is your basting stitches around your design so I think I had mentioned on another um, video and I'm gonna back this up a little bit to make sure we can see everything okay so if you're um, sometimes you want to just base your your um, fabric onto your stabilizer or if you're doing an applique you want to base that fabric on your onto your other fabric so you can go ahead and, and manipulate it well this is the basting um, icon to be able to do that and you can manipulate how long the stitches and everything are like I had mentioned on the other one and it's on another page down here where you can uh, adjust the size this which is grayed out here is your p pattern connection for your by your camera now that is what you use when you're doing borders and uh, you have to be in the bordering uh, mode for your camera to to recognize that I, I learned that by mistake when I was trying to do my sash um, bordering with the sash um, magnetic sash hoop uh, when I did that demo I realized after the fact the reason why I didn't work correctly because I didn't have enough background information and that I wasn't doing it correctly so I will be doing another video to do it correctly but you do have to use your connecting um, icon to connect the next move in your border so that's what this particular icon is for. And then this one, the fourth icon is your individual thread selection options. So if you want to select different threads or what have you, it takes you to this page and you can select your threads. And this comes in really handy, especially if you're doing an applique. What I have learned is, and I always wondered how that worked. Um, if you have a design, say you have a design that has 15 different colors or 20 or even 12 different colors, as you know, our machine only does 10 because we only have room for 10 spools, so you can only do 10 different colors. But you have this design that is more than 10, so you can set all 10 of your needles for the proper design that you want you have 10 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 now when you get to number 10 well before you when you get to number 10 then you need to hit this button here and it's going to cause the machine to stop stitching when it finishes with number 10 thread and it's going to automatically stop which is going to allow you to switch out threads so you can do the next two or five or ten more or however many more different colors that you need so that is how you are able to stitch a design that has more than ten different colors now I um, have not used this before because frankly not reading the manual before now I didn't know how to do it I knew it was a way I just didn't know what the way was so now I know so that's what I'm going to be using going forward what I've done in the past which you may have as well if you um, wasn't aware of this was just watch your machine and you knew when it got to that tenth color then you went in there and stopped it manually yourself because you're gonna put all your colors in however many colors it is and then the other thing that you have to keep in mind is when you say for instance it looks like this design has um, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and when it gets to ten 
Okay, I'm trying to count it. It should be one through ten because I put the hand up there. So let me take that off. Take that off. When it gets one, gets all the way one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, looks like it only has t eight colors. Well, if I had a different design that had more than eight, say it had 12, I'm going to go ahead and put all 12 of my, select the colors for all 12 colors that I need. But I'm going to use this behind number 10. So it'll stop. Then I'm going to put the last two colors on there. And then it's going to go ahead. I'll hit the unlock and hit the uh, green button. And then it'll go back to stitching. So just want to, hopefully that's clear. Just remember that if you go to this particular page, that um, you can select. And I want to go back to the page right here, this page. This icon right here will take you to this page. And then you can select all the colors that you need. Hit the stop button once you get to your 10. And then... Go ahead and stitch the other colors that you would like to stitch. So just keep that in mind. Okay, as we know, these are our movement uh, alignment buttons. I think is what they call it, alignment um, buttons. So you can move it back and forth, up and down. So it is moving the pantogram, and you can adjust that on your machine to get it aligned the way you want it or position on the cloth that you're embroidering it on however you want it so it's going to stitch exactly where you want it and not necessarily in the center so and then this of course puts it back into the center the center button puts it back into the center this I believe just makes it move quicker or slower see that makes it move real slow this a little bit more and then this real fast so that's all that does it just um, allows you to adjust the, the speed of you moving that particular guide around and then <coughs> excuse me we all know what this is this is your snowman so if you hit this it will um, it says okay to revert to the original position and angle it, okay so you're gonna put your snowman right there and that just helps you to align everything up to make sure everything is centered. It's going to, the machine is going to do its camera thing and recognize the snowman. And wherever you have set that at, it is going to make sure that it's where it is. My machine is not recognizing a snowman because I don't have anything in there. It's moving around looking for one. Then it's going to come back probably and tell me they can't find it or whatever. Is trying to recognize there is no snowman there so I don't have a hoop in there I'm assuming it's going to come back and say there's nothing there cannot recognize the embroidery positioning mark because of course I have nothing in there but that's what it does that's your snowman this particular icon here is your color sort and it allows you to sort your thread based upon how you uh, the sequence in what in which you wanted to stitch out this one is uninter uninterrupted stitching say for instance like I did a project yesterday that had six different potentially six different colors that could be used but it didn't need six different colors because some of those uh, stops were dye line and dye line is when you're doing like an embroidery uh, a applique type project and they have the dye line and then you stitch the you put the fabric down on top of that and the needle stitches around it in the right place then you can take the hoop off cut it out and so forth and so on so a lot of those stops were dye lines. So you don't need to change your color every time you do a dye line. With, I just had the one color. So everything was one color. So what this does, this tells the machine that everything that I stitch on this particular 
design is going to be one color. You don't have to worry about looking for another color. These two are the tie, tie, um, the tie off and at the beginning of the stitch and the tie off at the end of the stitch. I don't bother it. I don't know enough about the digitizing aspect of it. I just know that every stitch has to have a beginning and an end tie off so it doesn't unravel. And this allows you to adjust it some kind of way. But again, I don't bother it because um, the design has been set up to do it the way it's supposed to do. Um, this, as we know, is editing. If you need to edit, this is your memory. Again, if you want to save all of this information to the machine, everything that you have manipulated and changed, and you want to save it to the memory of the machine, you can do so. And then this one is your starting and ending position setting again you can set it where you want it to start like if i moved it over this way uh let me see put it on fast if i move it over that way and i wanted it to start there the next time i'm going to set this as my start and so the next time i do it it's going to do what it's supposed to do this as we know is the trace and let me uh, I didn't mean to hit it, but I did, but it will trace. Now, I told you earlier that I always use my camera. The other thing that I always do, I use my tracer. I always look at the camera positioning of the design, and then I trace it. I don't care if I have a regular hoop in there, or if I have my mighty hoop in there, or if I have a fast frame in there. I don't care what type of hoop that I'm using, even my... Uh, um, hoop tip clamp that I have, I always trace. I want to know where my needle is going to fall. I want to know where my needle is going to fall. I do not want my needle to hit the side of my frame. So I trace. There are people that are not of that persuasion. They don't think that they have to do it. But everything that I have read that has anything to do with embroidery does say you should def def definitely trace your pattern. So that's what I do. So now I'm, I'm going to get out of this and move to the next page, which is a very familiar page. This is your color sort page. Uh, this is your regional field where your design is. And you can look at this and see the little cross mark. It's going to tell you where the, the uh, stitching is at any given time. And this is your progress board here. And each one of these different colors represent the different colors of the thread. So you'll know exactly how far is the black, the white, the yellow, the green, the blue, the red, whatever it is. It tells you all of that. So that is the... Um, progress chart. This is um, tells you how long it's going to take you to stitch. This says 20 minutes. So this design itself takes 20 minutes. This tells you how many colors. The bottom tells you how many colors. Nine. The top is going to tell you exactly where you are with that nine uh, colors that you have to have. This particular one, the bottom number, it's going to tell you how many stitches is in that particular design. Right here it says 9,450, 9,450. The top number is going to tell you how many stitches you have already stitched out of that 9,450. So you can look at that and, tell, and gauge how much more time you have to do it. However, you don't have to because here tells you uh, the time and where you are. 21 minutes and you've only stitched in three minutes of the 21. So that is the information that you get here. This particular uh, icon or whatever you want to call it here is one of my favorite because since I manually select my colors, I don't do it, uh, I don't set up a sequence, I do a manual sequence. I, every time I hit a different um, the one through the one through nine, I'm going to know what it's going to stitch when it gets there. I'm going to know what it's going to stitch. Therefore, I know what I want that particular part of the design, the color. 
and it says it is the regional di display showing the part of the design that will be stitched for the current color. The regional display here shows the part of the design that will be stitched for the current color. So you know exactly what color the handle is, the, the frame around the heart and all of that as you go down. You know exactly where you are. I love that. I love that. I love that. It is absolutely wonderful. This is your thread sequence. If I had selected colors and everything, it would be here with the various different colors that I selected. And um, over here are the colors that are available. It says the thread color setup display is this. And this one over here is the thread color sequence display. Sequence display, color display. This should match if you're doing the automatic sequence where you have your thread set up where the machine knows what color is on what needle. If you're doing the manual like I do, this over here thread color display is not going to match my sequence because this is going to be individualized. This is going to be whatever probably the design itself is supposed to be called for based upon what threads you have selected if it's Floriani or Sulky or what have you. So these should match if you have it automatic. If you have it manually sequenced, they will not match. This again is your stop. So if you need to stop for applique or you need to trim it or if you need to stop it because you need to add thread colors because you've gone past the 10. That's what this little hand is for. It is your stop hand. This is my friend. That little wand there. That's what I use all the time because I go through here and I select my colors based upon what color I have on these threads 1 through 10. If I have white, black, green, purple, yellow, red, turquoise, pink, gold, green, teal, whatever, then I'm going to know by looking at my thread that I have up here what I'm going to put in here. And then once I'm done with that, I hit OK. I'm good to go. That's how I do my thread um, setup. So that and this icon here is another lifesaver. If you don't remember anything else, remember this can save your life. What does that do? That is your, um, let me see what the official name is, your forward backward stitch adjustment goes an increment of one millimeter through a thousand, one millimeter back all the way up to 1,000 millimeters forward and everything in between. You got the one, one minus one plus, 10 minus 10 plus, 100 minus 100 plus, 1,000 minus 1,000 plus. What does that mean? Your thread broke and it stitched 4, 5, 6, 10, 20 movements before it, the machine recognized that it broke. And now you switch, you, you, you re-thread it and everything. You can hit your 10 minus and it's going to move it back 10, hit 10 again, it's going to move it back 10. So it's going to put you at the exact spot or as close back as possible to where it broke. So you're not going to have a skip stitch uh, uh, space. You're not going to have that space in there where you would have uh, normally a space in there. And you don't want that space. You want it to be right there. So you use this to make sure that that doesn't uh, happen. You can, what I've done several times, I have, and I'm going to get out of here and go to this thing right here where it says return, and then this thing here 
Let me adjust it down. Okay, here is return. Here is the little red lock. And then below that, as you know, is the green button. How many times have I been distracted, not paying attention, and hit my return instead of my unlock to get started? Guess what happens? You hit return. You took that puppy all the way back to the beginning. How many times have I done that? More times than I want to remember or admit. Not like 10 times, but I know I have done it at least four with various different um, projects. And it gets on my last nerve because I made the mistake. I really don't think that this return button should be here because it's too easy to hit. You want to start it because that's what you do when you hit this button, but instead you accidentally hit this button and you just think you screwed everything up. Well, you didn't. If you know to go in here and put it back where it belongs. And what I do, I just guesstimate how many stitches back I am based upon where we are here and especially the top number because if I have nine different thread stops and I would say was on number six and now I'm all the way back at number one then I know that I'm going to have to hit plus 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 until at least I get to number six. I'll hit the thousand if that if it's a lot of stitches or a hundred or whichever it is until I get to like number five then I'll get go to a lower number to go forward so I don't go too far ahead or not close enough but you can get it where you need it to get it back where you need to be I hope that's clear if it's not clear comment to me ask me the question and I'll try to explain it to you a little better but basically what I'm saying is this is your friend this little icon right here is your lifesaver with your designs. If you ever make a mistake, if you have break thread, broken thread, um, um, bird nest, I hit the wrong button, whatever, that can save your project if you use that. So don't forget. And as we know, this is your speed here. Adjust your speed according to your thread, according to your design, the density, and the fabric itself. That's what you use to adjust the speed. Now this machine, of course, is supposed to be able to stitch all the way up to a thousand stitches per minute. I think the fastest that I've ever used this machine has been either 700 or 800. I've not stitched it all the way up to a thousand. Uh, there's a lot of vibration that occurs when you the faster you go the more vibration you have so even though it says it can do a thousand I personally don't think I will ever put it on a thousand to I might do it just for a couple of three four five six seconds just to see how fast that is and how much vibration but to go through an entire project like that I would be too nervous to take it up that fast because it is a lot of vibration. Now, if any of you have done that and you're comfortable with it, please um, put it in a comment below so I can read it and maybe I'll have a little bit more confidence and I can share it with, with my audience. But that's what I do with, with um, my speed. So, where are we? Just about coming up to to the um, to the end of this particular informational video for today. I did speak about the manual sequencing. I'm not going to go over that. I spoke about that in another video, so I won't go over that. So. With that being said, that is pretty much the end of the information that I want to share with you today. Going over all the overview of the selecting your pattern and your stitch out overview, all of those things. So if you have any questions, 
hopefully all of this was understandable to you. Um, whatever questions you may have, please put it in the comment below. I do appreciate all the comments that I get and um, just try your machine, play with it and see what all it will do for you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is all that I have for you today. I do appreciate you stopping by and uh, checking out my channel. Again, hopefully everything that I presented today is understandable. I know some of it may sound a little confusing, but the best thing to do is just try out your machine. Make sure you go through all of the icons. Look and see what they do and how that can best work with your uh, designs. Be creative. Choose things that you've never done before and stitch it out and see what happens. So that was the main purpose of doing this series. I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of all of the different icons that are on the beginning of your, of your screens. There are so many more icons within the design center. Um, I will do a video on that soon. It's a lot of information in there. And I also will be doing more information on some of the projects that are in the, the um, Brother 1055X playbook. There's 36 different projects in there. I won't be going through all of those, but there are a few on there that I do really want to, to explore. And I will be exploring that with you. So again, thank you so much for stopping by. This is Shirley within, with uh, So To We Begin Embroidery. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I wish you many blessings, and have a great time with crafting and your embroidery machine, and we'll just learn this information together. Have a great day.